Set. Number 142, okay? Okay, we're live on Facebook now. Shh. Okay, so the guys in the front, make sure you guys don't talk, okay? Yeah. Okay, shh. Musa, next warning, I'm gonna kick you out. Musa, we are talk we're talking about you, don't get excited. Ahmed, we're talking about you as well. Okay. And Aisa, we're talking about you as well. So behave. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيقول السفهاء من الناس ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها قل لله المشرق والمغرب يهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا وما جعلنا القبلة التي كنت عليها إلا لنعلم من يتبع الرسول ممن ينقلب على عقبيه ممن ينقلب على عقبيه وَإِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةً إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي نستغفر الله ربنا من كل ذنب ونتوب إليك ربنا زدنا علما اللهم يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير يا فتاح يا فتاح يا فتاح آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام Okay, so now begin um, ayah number 142 surat al-Baqarah <coughs> So before I move on um, what we see just a quick recap yesterday we finished off talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam actually before that we talked about Bani Israel how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, favored Bani Israel and gave them so much. And you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam had two sons, Ismail and Ishaq. So, Bani Israel were from, were the descendants of Ishaq alayhi salam, right? Ishaq, the son of Ishaq with Yaqub alayhi salam, from Yaqub you had all the prophets Bani Israel began. So, Ishaq alayhi salam. Now, when they did not follow the commandments and they in fact killed the prophet, changed the book, you know, uh, ridicule the messenger, you know, um, and also ridicule Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, talked against Jibreel alayhi salam and all kinds of things. They did not leave anything, right? Anything to do with revelation, they made fun of and they mocked at it. So then what happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, you are no, you're not worthy of this revelation. You don't, you don't deserve this revelation. So what does Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes the leadership away from Bani Israel and now He gives it to the other from the, you know, the descendants of Ismail alayhi salam. And who came from Ismail alayhi salam? Which prophet came from Ismail alayhi salam? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So that's what we're talking about here. How the leadership changed and so now because it's a new nation, it will have a new direction, it will have a new, uh, you know, constitution, new law, it will have new injunctions, everything. Today we'll, do, we'll talk about the Muslim Ummah, what are the responsibilities of uh, Muslim Ummah. سيقول سفهاء من الناس ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها The foolish ones amongst you, uh, amongst the people, will say ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها what turned them away from the Qibla that they were upon? قُلِّ لِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Tell them, to Allah belongs the East and the West. يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ He guides whomever he wants to the straight path. So this is a change of Qibla. So the Qibla was changed from Bayt al-Maqdis, where the Muslims were facing, facing initially, uh, to uh, Masjid al-Haram, to uh, Kaaba. And so, so when, the, when that changed, the Bani Israel were like, you know, like confused, like why, why did that happen? And what is it? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them fools. Sufaha'u minan nas. 
right? Fools, because they did not follow the message. And that is how we made you a middle nation, a balanced nation. So all of you, so that you can be a witness over the people. So that the messenger can be a witness over you. So Allah says, I can fix this, it's moving out. Okay, that, no, it's fine, I don't know. We looked at you, you're fine. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَصَطًا So the, the quality of this ummah is that this ummah is going to be a balanced nation. Can someone remind me what does it mean to be a balanced nation? Go back to Surah Al-Fatiha. What is a balance? Maghdub did not have balance. Dalin did not have balance. But this an'amta alayhim had balance. What was the balance? What was the balance they had? I'm not talking about hypocrites. The balanced nation is a nation uh, that is going to balance knowledge and action. Knowledge and action. Go back to Surah Al-Fatiha. Right? Knowledge and action. That whatever they learn, they apply it. Maghdub, the Maghdub nation had knowledge, no action. And Balin did not have knowledge and they had wrong actions. So here Allah says, you are the middle nation. When you are a middle nation, then you will be witness over the people that mankind will not have anything to say against this message because Muslims were living a balanced nation, like a balanced nation. And when we live up to Islamic laws, the Quranic laws, then what's going to happen, even the messenger will be a witness for us in the day of judgment. And the change of Qibla is only a, a means to check whether, uh, to see who follows the messenger. And, and Allah wants to see who is turning on his heels against the messenger. Verily, this change of Qibla is very difficult except upon those whom Allah guides. Allah is not going to let your Iman go to waste. And it's talking about those people who face a Qibla, who face Bayt al Maqdis before the changing. So when the, when the Qibla changed, the Sahabas were asking, Ya Rasulullah, how about all our ibadats before this? Is that going to be accepted? Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Allah will not waste your action. So whatever you did in the past is still accepted. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily, Allah is extremely kind and most merciful towards the people. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ Verily, we saw your face turn, turning to the heavens. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was praying uh, at Asr time and he was looking up to the, you know, uh, and, and before this he was looking up, right, to the, to the heavens, you know, just looking up is, uh, you know, requesting Allah to change the Qibla. The Prophet ﷺ had this love for Kaaba, so he always wanted to face the Kaaba. So when just the look of the Prophet ﷺ was enough for Allah to accept his, his dua. So Allah says, we saw you turning your face to the sky. Surely we will turn your face towards the Qibla. And while they were praying Asr in this masjid, now it's called Masjid Qiblatayn. What happened? Allah says, فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ الشَّطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Turn your face towards the sacred mosque, towards Masjid Al-Haram. وَحَيْثُمَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ الشَّطْرَ Wherever you are, turn your faces towards it, towards Masjid Al-Haram. And so what happened? The command came and the Prophet ﷺ turned in Salah. Right, 180 degrees, you know, to towards uh, Masjid Al Haram, and the Sahabas also turned, and no one spoke. They followed the messenger, and this is the contrast Allah is drawing between the followers of Musa Alayhi and the followers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how they were following him. Wa inna ladina utul kitab. Verily, the people of the book who were given the book, la yalamuna anhu al haqq min rabbihim. They know that this is the truth from their master. Wa ma Allahu bi ghafilin amma yamalun. And Allah is not unmindful of what they all do. Ayah number 145. And if you, Ya Rasulullah, would come to them with clear proofs, with every single ayah, 
uh, they will they are not going to follow your qibla right even though they know this is the truth from their master they're not going to follow this qibla and you are not going to follow their qibla so change of qibla is a change of leadership right before the muslim ummah was following bani israel when the prophet did not know anything he would follow bani israel now we don't have to follow them they are maghdub we don't we don't have we have no obligation to follow this nation now we have our own constitution own direction own capital it's going to be the mecca it's going to be mecca so Allah says, وَمَا بَعْضُهُمْ بِتَابِعِ الْقِبْلَةَ بَعْضٍ And some of them follow the qibla, will not follow the qibla of the others. وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ هُوَاءَهُمْ And if you follow their desires, Ya Rasulullah, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After this amazing revelation has come to you, إِنَّكَ إِذَا لَمِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ If you follow them, then surely you are going to be among the ones who are ظالمين uh, ones who are unjust الذين آديناهم الكتاب those people whom we gave this book يعرفونه كما يعرفون بناءهم they know him like they know their own sons it's talking about Bani Israel that when they looked at the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم they knew that he was he was a true prophet like they know their own sons they know it they, they could see all you know every, all the signs in him وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِّنْهُمْ لَيَكْتُمُونَ الْحَقَّ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ But a group among them conceal the truth and while they know that this is the truth. الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكْ Truth is from your master. فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَنِينَ Do not be skeptical about anything. This is the ultimate truth. وَلِكُلِّمْ وُجْهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا Every single person has a direction he turns to. And this, is, this could be in a, in a general sense that everybody is working towards something. Whether it's dunya, whether towards your work, whether towards, you know, you know, memorizing Quran, you know, every single person has a direction and he's working hard towards it. And Allah says, what should be your motive? What should you work towards? You know, erase each other in good deeds. That should, that's the wujha that you should have. You know, facing of the qibla is not just a physical, but it's actually in a, in a metaphorical sense, you're facing towards Allah and that your every action is directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we face the qibla. That's why we spend time finding where the, where the, where the qibla is so that we see where, where the Kaaba and where our, all our actions should be directed. And that's the same reason why we do tawaf. That we do tawaf to show that Allah is the center. Allah's house is the center of all our actions in, in, in our life. فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُ يَأْتِ بِكُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا Wherever you are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring, uh, you know, bring all of you to Him. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ Verily, Allah is in full control over all things. That Kaaba should be the center of the world. No matter where you are, you should face the Kaaba. And so, so we are ayah number 149. So here we see that فَقُلْ فَقُلْ You know, قُلْ is used so many times facing the Qibla because one is for the Prophet to face the Qibla, the other three times is used. So one is for the Prophet to face the Qibla, the other is asking the Meccans and, and for the rest of the world to face the Qibla. وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجَتَ فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ الشَّطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ And wherever you come out from, face, you know, direct your face towards شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Towards the sacred mosque, that is the Kaaba. وَإِنَّهُ لَلْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكْ Verily, this is the truth from your master. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is not unmindful at all with what you all do. وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجْتَ And from wherever you come out from فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Face the sacred mosque. I said this, فَوَلِّي is used three times. One is for the Prophet, one is for the people of Mecca, and one is for the rest of the world. So this is the third one. فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرًا Wherever you are, direct your face towards towards it if you do not follow if you do not face the qibla then the people will argue against you there will be an argument for the people against you except for those who transgress among them what does this mean that people will argue against you the people will say this ummatun wasatan this middle nation this balanced nation which their own book says they should face the Qibla, but they don't act upon it. What kind of a balanced nation this is? So they will point fingers at it. So Allah says, do not let that happen. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ مَخْشَوْنِي Do not fear them, fear me. وَلِيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكُمْ And I will fulfill my favor upon you. What is the favor? New leadership. I will fulfill my favor upon you. وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ So that you are may be guided. 
Then Allah says, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ And that is how we sent amongst you a messenger. Now we have a new capital, new direction. Now we need a leader, and the leader is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah says, and that is how, and this is a fulfillment of Ibrahim alayhi salam's dua, that Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua after building the Kaaba, if you remember. Ya Allah, send amongst them a messenger who is going to teach them the book, who is going to recite the book. So four, four um, objective of a messenger. Read the book, teach them, re recite, teach them the book, and teach them wisdom and purify them. That's the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now Allah answers in, in a few ayat. Yesterday we finished off talking about this dua and we begin today and the dua is already fulfilled. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam says, I am the dua of my forefather. I am the dua, I am the dua of my forefather. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi would not have been sent if it was not for Ibrahim alayhi salam's dua. He cared about his generation. So Allah says, what Allah does, He accepts the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam and He and improvises it. So Ibrahim alayhi salam puts zakihim at the end, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts tazkiyah first, purification first, because before a teacher can teach the student, he has to make sure the student is ready to receive that. He has to be clean. The example that is given, imagine a glass of water. If you don't clean, if, if the glass is not clean, there is no point in putting more and more water. It's only gonna get dirty, you cannot use that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first says, a teacher needs to clean the glass, clean the student from inside, and then pour water. And so the Prophet came and did the tazkiyah of the people. Yatlu alaykum ayatina, he recited the book, and purified them, and then taught the book and the wisdom of that book. And he taught you from the things that you had no idea about. And what are the things he taught? We'll talk about this today. All the laws. You remember me. You try your best to remember me. I will remember you. And be thankful to me. And don't be ungrateful. The fact that Allah is remembering us, we should be thankful for that. So, so be thankful to me and do not be ungrateful. Ayah number 153. O oh, you who have believed, seek help through patience and prayer. In Allah Sabirin. Indeed, Allah is with those who are patient. The same command was given to Bani Israel in Surah Baqa, in the first juz. Right? The same command was given to Bani Israel. They did not care. Now the same command is given to the Muslim Ummah. Remember I said how Muslim Ummah is next in line? The same command is given to, Bani, uh, to Muslim Ummah. Seek help through patience and prayer. That goes back to prayer again. Indeed, verily, Allah is with those who are patient. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ Don't think that the ones who are killed in the path of Allah are dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Rather, they are alive in the sight of Allah, but you don't realize. And we know the Prophet ﷺ says that a martyr is in the in a form of a green bird flying in Jannah. And the nest of these green birds are in the... Uh, are in the chandeliers hanging from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are fed in a way that we do not know. So they are alive in the path, in, 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 the, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَّكُمْ Now that you are given this book, you will be tested. Every ni'mah comes with a test. So Allah says, Verily, surely, we will test all of you. When Israel were tested, right? Bala'un Allah says, same word here. We will definitely test all of you. With what? With one of five things. Or a part of five things. Min khawf. With fear. Waljur from hunger. We'll test you. amwal with the reduction of property. with the reduction of people. Wastamarat and with the reduction of crops. That we will test you. With, you know, uh, fear is political fear. And jur is hunger, which is economical, right? We'll test you with different, different things. And sometimes you will lose your wealth. Sometimes you will lose your business. Sometimes you will lose people, your beloved ones. Sometimes, you know, your, your crops will be destroyed or even your children. Samarat could be children. But what does Allah say? We will test you. But who is the winner here? وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ We'll give good news to those who are patient. How do we seek, how do we get patience? How can we be patient? Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Through salah. Right? In the previous ayah we talked about. 
الذين إذا who are the patient one Allah describes الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة there are those when a مصيبة a مصيبة is like a sniper shot right exactly targeted right مصيبة when a thing a calamity which is supposed to hit you hits you قالوا what do they say إن لله وإن إليه راجعون that we belong to Allah and to Him is our return and that is what they say they are completely content with Allah's decision أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة those are the ones on whom Allah's blessing the blessings of their masters is upon ورحمة and His mercy وأولئك هم المهتدون and those are the ones who are guided who are upon guidance ayah number one fifty eight so those are in fact the ones who are guided, not those who do not show patience. And then now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of someone who was patient and was guided. Who, who give me an example of a person? Allah brings an example. In Safa wal Marwa min Sha'airillah. Verily, Safa and Marwa is from the signs of Allah. Safa and Marwa reminds us of Hajra alayhi salam. How Hajra alayhi salam, she was left in the desert with her kid. She has nothing. And she went from Safa to Marwa searching for water. And she was content with Allah's decision. She did not question Ibrahim alayhi salam, why are you doing this? Why is Allah doing this with me? It's a musibah, it's a difficulty. But what did she do? She accepted it and she was trying to do her best to find you know, comfort in it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens? Then sends Jibreel alayhi salam and the Zamzam water comes out and then from there the whole city began. Today Mecca cannot be Mecca without the sacrifice of Hajra alayhi salam. So all of, the, all of humankind, all the Muslims have to, have to do the Sa'i of Safa and Marwa, have to follow the footsteps of this woman who was obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their hajj to be completed. What an honor Allah gave Hajr alayhi salam. So Allah is saying, when you follow the commandments of Allah, you will see success, not only in this dunya, not only limited to this time, but until the end of times. So, inna safa wal marwa min sha'airillah. Safa and marwa are from the signs of Allah. That's why when we are doing sa'iyya safa and marwa, we say this, these, these ayat, right? فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ Whoever performs the hajj, performs hajj of the house, أو اعتمر, or اعتمر means to do umrah, or does the umrah, فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يُطَوَّفَ بِهِمَا There is no sin upon him if he goes through, he does a sa'iyya safa and marwa. Why, is it say, why does it say there is no sin upon him? Because the Sahabas, when they accepted Islam, uh, when they became Muslims, they were questioning the Prophet ﷺ, saying that, Ya Rasulullah, when we were, you know, during the days, in the, during the days of Jahiliyyah, we used to do the Sa'i of Safa and Marwa, but we did it for idols. There were idols on top of these mountains. And so we were doing it. Should we still do it? And Allah says, no, Safa and Marwa are actually the signs. They were, you know, it's the Arabs who changed it and put idols on it. But from the beginning, from Ibrahim Alayhi time, this was sacred. So there is no sin upon you if you do the Sa'i of Safa and Marwa. Woman tatawa'a khayran fa'inna Allah shakirun alim. Whoever does, whoever does extra, then indeed Allah is appreciative and all knowing. Verily, those people who hide what has been sent down to them from clear evidence, from clear proofs, huda and guidance, after it has been made clear to the people in the book, those are the people whom Allah curses, and uh, those who curse also curse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the people who get the truth and they hide it, they don't want to share with others. Yaktumun. Like us Muslim Ummah, we cannot, we may, we may fall into this. That hiding the revelation, being hesitant to share the message of Islam. Allah says, if you hide the truth and guidance and clear proofs, then what's going to happen? Allah's curse is upon those people. Illa ladina tabu. Except this is one of the scariest ayah. This is one of the reasons, this is one of the things that motivates me to learn and teach the book. And that should be the motivation for all of us, that we cannot hide this book. We cannot be scared of talking about the realities and the, the real things in the Qur'an. You cannot justify things, oh no, it actually, always we take a, you know, a defensive position. Uh, no, but, but what, what, what Allah says in Surah Anbiya is that truth always takes an offensive position, not a defensive position. They have to say this is the truth. And the falsehood is the one that's like, no, 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 actually, they are, falsehood is always on the defense. But we see it's a flip, you know, it, it's completely changed today. Illa tabu. Who are the only people who are protected from the curse of Allah? 
those people who repent and they rectify, they change and they clarify the Quran. Going forward, they change their lives and they stop hiding and they start you know, uh, revealing the truth, those are the people I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to forgive them. Rahim. Indeed, I am in fact or is, is the one who is most forgiving and most merciful. Verily, those people who disbelieve, disbelieve is what here? Again, I mentioned this, kafaru, kafara, kafara doesn't always mean to be a non-Muslim. Kafara is translated based on the context of the ayah. So the context here is those people who clarify the Qur'an. And kafaru is those people who don't clarify the Qur'an, who hide. Kafar also means to hide. So inna ladina kafaru, those people who hide the truth, the true message. Wa matu wa hum kuffar. And they die in that state. They die hiding the truth, not sharing, not living a life of Muslim. Ulaika alayhim la'natullah. Upon them is the curse of Allah. Wal malaika and the angels. Wal nasi ajma'een and all the people. In this ayah, la'na is used in the ism form. In the previous ayah, yal'anu was used. Yal'anu is fa'al, is, is a verb. La'na is a noun, it's the ism. So the difference between ism and, ism and fa'al is that ism is permanent and fa'al is temporary. When you are alive, you still have a chance to repent. So Allah says, Yalla'anu. But when you die, in that state, what happens? Your case is over. So it's a permanent thing that la'na will be there forever because there's no chance for you to repent. Now you are dead. Allah not make us among these people. Khalidina fiha. They are going to remain in Jahannam forever and ever. La yukhaffafu anhumul adab. The punishment will not be lightened for them. Very severe ayat. Walahum yunzarun, and they will not be given any respite, any time, uh, any any time, any uh, deferral. Why is such? Why is Allah giving such a you know severe punishment to these people who hide the book? It's a big crime. But why? Allah says, Wa ilahukum ilahu wahid. Your Lord is one Lord. La ilaha illa wa rahman. He is the most merciful. Allah saying he's most merciful, yet he's giving such harsh punishment. How does that make sense? The answer is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the book, so you communicate this message to the people, telling them how merciful your master is. But because you did not share this message, people had wrong concepts about God, and they left this message, they, they started doing all kinds of things, they didn't get any warner. Because of you, so many people were killed, so many, so many oppression happened because you didn't share the book. So that's why you deserve such a harsh punishment. Illahu rahman rahim Right? Scary thing. Did we have, you know, Muslim, if you see a Muslim, it's not a joke. You need to get up and, and you know, Iman, Iman is not something that remains in the heart. Iman, Allah describes like a tree. It goes up, it goes in all directions. It's not hidden. It's visible to all people and it's firm. It does not change with you know with people. It does not give any excuses for what it does. Right? Verily, indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of the night and day, and the ships, the lost ships that sail in the sea, Bima and what benefits the people. Wama anzal Allahu min al-sama'i min ma'in and what what comes down from the sky from the sky and the things that Allah sends down from the sky from water mawtiha and the water that gives life to the dead earth after it is completely uh, after it's completely dead. Wa betha fiha min kulli daba and in the uh, you know betha fiha min kulli daba and uh, and in all the moving creatures that Allah has scattered in the earth, what the three riyah and in this moving, in the circulating of the winds, was sahab and in the moving of the clouds, musakhari bayna samai wal ard, that are subjugated between the heavens and the earth, or what ayatin li qawmi yaqilun, or clear signs. Allah says, look at the things around you. Do you see any facade? Do you see any chaos? Do you ever see the sun is late sometime? Do you see that, you know, the sun and the moon are fighting with each other? Or some kind of, you know, uh, you know wind, wind and cloud are having a, 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 um, 
you know, debate or something. You don't see any of that. Everything is in harmony. When you see things in harmony, that is a sign that there's one ilah controlling all of it. Ilahukum ilahum wahid. That is it. لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ There are clear signs for a, for a nation that use their intellect, that tries to understand. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ And among the people, مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّهُمْ يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ And among the people are those who take, you know, um, who take partners besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayah number 165. There are those who take partners with Allah and they love that thing like the way they should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know? So they are, they are supposed to love Allah. Allah should be the most beloved to them. But they love other things besides Allah like wealth. How do you know if you love something else more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's simple. Just look at what you talk about the most. Right? مَنْ أَحَبَّ شَيْئًا ذَكَرَهُ كَثِيرًا The Arabs would say, whoever loves something, so if whoever loves something, then he would talk about it a lot. So if you would only talk about, you know, this player, if you only talk about this movie, if you only talk about this game, then that is what you love. But if when you speak, when you, you know, walk, you only, you know, think about Allah, only Allah comes from your mouth, and you only connect everything back to Allah, or you connect everything back to the Qur'an, oh, that ayah, you know, this is what we talked about, oh, now I got it. When you talk about Allah and His Messenger, then that is what is, that's what exactly in your heart, right? When you talk about money, then that's what is in your heart. So Allah says, they love things besides Allah, like the way they should love Allah. وَالَّذِينَ amanu. But who are the true believers? They are those, أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ They are intense in the love of Allah. They are صِبْغَةَ Allah, right? They are, you can see the color of Allah. As soon as you see them, you have to say something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That's how these people are. These are true believers. If, if, they, if those who disbelieve see when they would see the punishment that all power belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that verily He is intense, severe in punishment. On that day, what's going to happen? The people... Uh, the people is Those people who are followed will will uh, you know dis uh, disavow from those who were followed, right? So a person is following another person on the day of judgment. He will say, I don't know who you are, right? I don't know who you are. And when they will see the punishment, they uh, uh, you know all relationships will be cut off. I number one sixty seven. So you know people today. Uh, follow these d different people like maybe that's that uh, could be following Jesus right saying saying that he is God or following some celebrity right saying okay he is the best I'm gonna follow his haircut his his style the way he looks the with the shoes he wear everything gonna be like him on that day Allah will say uh, uh, these people will say I don't know who you are you know I never told you to follow me and then these people are like, why don't you protect us from punishment? I never told you to follow me. And you know, they, both of them will fight each other and they will get out of it. And you know, when both of them are entered into Jahannam, they will blame each other saying, Ya Allah, punish this person. You know, because of him I ended up in Jahannam. And they will say, Ya Allah, I never told them to follow me. Punish them for following me blindly. They're supposed to follow you, Ya Allah. So they will have an argument. So Allah is saying, your role model, you are supposed to follow only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to be trendsetters, not trend followers. We are, we are supposed to be like shepherds, not sheep. They will say, Ya Allah, if you give us one chance, we'll go back to dunya and we will you know, dis, you know, disown them, disavow them like the way they have left us today. That is how we show the ayahs to them. We show their deeds to them. حَسَرَاتٍ عَلَيْهِمْ So that they feel bad about it, have had regret, remorse for what they have done. وَمَا هُمْ بِخَارِجِينَ مِنَ النَّارِ And they will not be taken out of the fire. That your you know, uh, obligation is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا يُهَا النَّاسِ O oh, you who have believed, O oh, yeah, oh, mankind, كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Addresses for all humankind. All humankind should eat halal food. That's what the ayah is saying, right? يَا يُهَا النَّاسِ O oh, oh mankind, كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Eat from halal and good things. Anything that is halal is actually tayyib, right? Halal, halal and tayyibah. 
um, you know, um, Allah subhanahu had made good things halal to us. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Verily, he is a clear enemy to you. So think about halal and tayyibah. Something could be halal, but you don't like it. So it's not tayyib for you, right? Halal and tayyibah is, from the sharia perspective, it is halal to eat. But you don't like, you have some karaha towards it, it's okay, you cannot, you don't have to eat that. So you have to eat something that is pure, that is clean, and something that you like, halal and tayyib, right? So just because you don't like something, you can't say it's haram, how do you eat that? That's so nasty. No, you don't li like it, but it's okay for others to eat it. إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ Indeed, uh, inna, so Allah says, shaitan is a clear enemy to you. And Allah says, what does shaitan do? إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ Shaitan commands you, calls you towards evil and fahsha and towards indecent acts. That's what shaitan calls you to. Did shaitan call our grandparents to indecent act? Right, he, he, did, he did call them to eat from that tree and because of that, they were exposed, their, their body was exposed. So that's what shaitan does. First, he commands you to evil. Once you follow shaitan, what's gonna happen? Your clothes will be removed, your modesty will be removed. Directly, he will not tell you, commit zina. He will not tell you that, look at that woman, no. He will tell you to do something evil. Once you follow that, then it becomes, shaitan has better control over you and he can easily persuade you in different things. And that he will make you say things against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which you do not know. And when it is said to them, follow ma anzal Allah, what Allah has sent down, they say that we will follow what our forefathers have sent. Don't they know that their forefathers were, uh, you know, didn't have any knowledge and they were not guided? Right? People, when you tell them follow Islam, they like, no, no, we will just follow our parents. Allah is saying, don't they know that their fathers didn't have any knowledge either? And those, and the example of those people who disbelieve. The example of those people who disbelieve is like the example of a, of, of a cattle, right? Of someone that yells, right? And he does not actually hear. So it's like, a, like, an, like an animal, you know, all it does is it just acts on, on sounds. It doesn't actually understand what the person is saying. So when you tell this person this is wrong, for him, it's like speaking on deaf ears. It is, there's no point in speaking to that person because it's just like cattle that it just moves because it just hears the sound, not because what the person is saying. So a person who disbelieves, you know, he, that's, that's, his, that's his case. He is deaf, dumb, and blind, and he does not understand. Ya amanu, O you who have believed, kulu min ma razaqnakum. Eat from the good things that we have provided you. Washkuru lillah, and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in kuntum iyahu ta'abudun. If you worship him alone, if you truly worship him. So our ibadat are connected with what we eat as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks so much about halal food, right from the beginning, right? The first instructions you can say are just starting today for, for the new ummah, for the new Muslim ummah. First is halal food. Before even saying, talking about salah or anything, first comes halal food. And, and when, you, when there's halal food, shaitan cannot have control over us. That's what we're seeing here. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ What is haram on you? What is haram in terms of eating? إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ Only four things are haram. First is dead animals, you cannot eat. If you find something dead, you cannot eat. وَالدَّمْ, blood, you cannot eat. وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ, the meat of swine. And number four, any meat on which the name of Allah is not taken. فَمَنِ الطُّرَ غَيْرَ بَاغِينَ وَلَا عَادٍ But if you are forced to eat, uh, you know, something that which is beyond your control, وَلَا عَادٍ and you know, not you know, and um, not being aggressive, fala ifma alay, then there is no sin upon you. So if you are forced to eat something and you have no other choice, then there is no sin upon you to eat from those four things that Allah has mentioned. 
provided that you have this karaha in your heart and you only eat a little bit just for, for survival. In Allah Ghafurur Rahim, verily Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. In Allahina Yaktumuna Ma and Zalullahu Milan Kitab. Verily those people who hide what has what Allah has sent down from the book, Wayashtaruna bihi thaman and qalila, and they purchase you know, uh, they, uh, and, and they purchase these ayat for a small value. What does this mean? We talked about this, that they sell the ayat, change the scripture, and you know, give wrong fatawas. They don't eat except fire. They only put fire in their stomach. That when you eat, when, when you eat something which is not so what is which is not halal whether it's through haram money or it, the food itself is haram what are you putting in your stomach you're only putting fire in your stomach you don't see the fire but on the day of judgment you will see that thing transform into fire and and uh, and eat you and Allah will not speak to these people on the day of judgment and he will not purify them the Prophet came to what? Yuzakihim. The Prophet came to purify, but haram food will ruin everything. That's why there's so much focus on haram, uh, the halal food. alim, and they will have a painful punishment. Those are the people who purchase misguidance in exchange for guidance. The same words were used for the hypocrites in the beginning, then Bani Israel, then is used for the Muslim Ummah if they eat, consume haram. And punishment, uh, and they have they have purchased punishment in exchange for uh, forgiveness of Allah. How patient are they over fire? This is sarcasm in the Quran. How patient are you over the Quran? Why? That is because they nazzal al bil that the book came down to them with truth. Wa inna ladina khtalafu. Verily, those people who disagree regarding the book, lafi shiqaqim baid, or in clear disagreement. Ayah number one seventy-seven. Laysa al qibla al mashriqi wal maghrib. It is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards mashriq wal maghrib. That you toward, face your, you know, turn towards east or west. Walakin al bir. Rather, righteousness is man amana billah is the one who believes in Allah and the last day. So what is it saying? That the Bani Israel were so particular about these rituals. The outer show. You know, even today Muslims are concerned about you know the outer things that you know is the pant above the ankle? Is the beard long enough? You know, um, do I pray you know in the right you know, do are my hands in the right place? Am I facing the right qibla? But the akhlaq is completely empty, it's completely void. So Allah is saying, and the Bani Israel were you know doing the same thing. That they will follow these rituals, but the essence was not there. Trustworthiness, honesty, not lying. These things were not there. So Allah is saying, it's not righteousness that you just do these outer things. Rather, what is true righteousness? The one who believes in Allah. Man amana billah. Wal yawmil akhir. And the day of judgment. If you have iman in the day of judgment, everything is set right. Wal yawmil akhir. Like eating haram food, earning haram, stealing money. is not even a question for you if you believe in the last day. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ And he believes in the angels who are writing all the deeds. وَالْكِتَابِ And he believes in all the books. وَالنَّبِيِّينَ And he believes in all the prophets. وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ And righteous person is the one who gives money to, or, to others in, in spite for the love of it. Right? He loves this money. حُبًّا جَمَّا He loves this money, but he's ready to give it up. To who? ذَوِ الْقُرْبَى To relatives, to his close people. If you have to spend money, start from your family, start from your kids, start from your wife or your husband, start from your close, your parents, your grandparents, your uncles, your aunts, you know, Zawil Qurba, start from there. Wal Yatama, and they spend on orphans, Wal Masakeen, and on the poor, Wabin as Sabil, and the travelers, Was Sailin, and also to give it to those people who ask. Wafir Riqab, and also giving it to the slaves, to freeing slaves, Wa Aqam as Salah, then establishing Salah. Look at where Salah came. When you think about a righteous person, what comes to mind? Salah, mashallah. He five times prayer, you know, he prays, he's a namazi, you know, he's amazing. So, but what, when, where does Allah put salah? He puts all the way at the end. What's first is your iman. If you have the right iman and the right muamalat, 
your dealings with people, giving other people's right, then comes salah. أقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموفون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا. And he fulfills the covenant whenever he makes a promise. والصابرين they are those people who are extremely patient وفي البأساء والضراء in times of adversity and affliction وحين البأس and in times of in times of war أولئك الذين صدقوا those are the true people وأولئك هم المتقون those are the people of تقوى خدا لل متقين guidance for the people of تقوى who is who are the people of تقوى we talked about in the beginning and Allah سبحانه brings it again these are the qualities. This is Ayatul Bir. We should all read again and try and implement this in our lives. Ya O you who have believed, Ayah number 178, Kutiba alaykum al Qisas. Verily, Qisas has been mandated on you. Qisas is um, uh, retribution, right? Uh, tooth for tooth, you know, life for life, right? Killing, uh, uh, a first person is killed, you kill him, like equal retribution. قصاص في القتلة قصاص has been prescribed on you in terms of murdering الحر بالحر a free man for a free man والعبد بالعبد a slave for a slave والأنثى بالأنثى and a female for a female فمن عفي له من أخيه شيء فاتباع بالمعروف وأداء إليه بإحسان and if that person forgives you then uh, uh, then فاتباع بالمعروف and act according to the common law and give the payment for for that person so let's say so what used to happen is that Bani Israel would, would, would cheat right so if one person is killed let's say a slave um, let's say someone rich someone rich from one tribe kills a slave right from the other tribe what Bani Israel will do they would not kill the person who killed this this slave they would actually kill another slave from from them right because he killed a slave so Allah says no the exact person needs to be killed Right? Just because he's rich, he's, he doesn't get to go. Everybody needs to qisas, equal retribution. Life for life. Right? And so Allah subhanahu wa says, uh, and if a believer forgives, if a believer forgives, like let's say a person kills someone, you know, in my family, then if I forgive that person, then Allah says, that is ma'roof, that is the best thing anybody can do. That is a mitigation from your master and a mercy. And whoever transgresses after that, then he will have a painful punishment. There is in retribution life. In killing, taking life for life, there is haya for the entire community. Because if the punishment is severe, that if you kill a person, the punishment is you will be killed, then people will be staying away from, from these crimes. But if they know that if I kill a bunch of people, I'm just going to spend my time in the prison, they are you know, motivated, they are not as you know, deterred as they are if they know they're going to be killed. So Allah says, in doing qisas, a community is, is uh, you know, led to, uh, you know, uh, is uh, um, a given life. Ya uli al-albab, O people of understanding, la'allakum tattaqoon, so you may protect yourself. Kutiba alaykum, hitha hadara ahadakum al-mawt, in daraka khayran al-wasiyyatu lil-walidayn wa laqarbina bil-ma'roof, haqqan ala al-muttaqeen. It has been prescribed upon you that when you die, when you're on your deathbed, uh, uh, um, and and you have a fortune, you have you have left some wealth behind, you should write a wasiyah, like write a will. For your parents, for your relatives. And this ayah is slightly modified with, with Surah An-Nisa, but the commandment still remains of writing a will when before death comes to you. Bil ma'roof with justice and equality. Do not do any injustice in your will. Haqqan al muttaqin It is a duty on all the people of taqwa. Taqwa, guidance, right? Muttaqeen are the ones who get guidance. So Allah is saying, you, if, you are, if you are a muttaqi, you should do that first. فَمَنْ بَدَّلَهُ And whoever changes it, بَعْدَمَا سَمِعَهُ After he heard it, فَإِنَّمَا إِثْمُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَ Then the sin is upon the person who changes it. Let's say the person passes away and he has a will, but he changes some things in the will. Because the person is dead, let me just change the will. And Allah says, you are sinful for doing that. إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah is all-hearing and He's all-knowing. فَمَنْ خَافَ مِنْ مُوسٍ أَوْ جَنَفًا أَوْ إِثْمًا 
But if a person fears that the one who wrote the will did something wrong, there was some partiality, it's not according to Islamic law, there's something he did, like you know, he gave, he says, all my wealth will go to this person. He did not do justice with his, with his inheritance, then the person can modify more sin, can, can rectify it, and there is no sin upon him. In Allah Ghafur Rahim. Verily, Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Look, all these ayat are on believers. O you who believe, O you who believe. Because this, this new um, ummah is formed, so new laws are given. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Kutiba alaykum al-siyam. Siyam, fasting has been prescribed onto you. Kama kutiba alaylladheena min qablikum. Like the way it has been prescribed on the previous nation. La'allakum tattaqoon. So that you may have taqwa. Quran is guidance for? Muttaqeen. Same thing Allah says. Fasting is for taqwa. More, more good deeds we do. Right? Like giving. Right? Ayatul Bir. All of those things we follow. Fasting. Making will. All of these good deeds will make us more and more muttaqi. And hence guidance becomes easy for us. Ayyam and ma'adudat. These are few days. Few number of days. Ramadan will come like this and go like this. Ayyam and ma'adudat. Very few days. But in the ayah, this, these are referring to those three days we used to fast. Before Ramadan was prescribed, Muslims were only fasting for three days. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا But if there is anybody who is sick, أو على سفر, or he's traveling, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Then he should make up those days uh, later. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ And a person who is old, he does not have strength to fast, then he should do fidya. Fidya means he should give money to the poor people to make up for that fast. طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ Feed the poor. فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا And whoever does willingly, out of his, you know, uh, you know he does voluntarily, فَهُوَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ It is better for him. Even though he cannot, but he tries his best, then it is better for him. وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرُ لَكُمْ That you fasting is better for you. إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If you only knew. شَهْرُ رَمَضَان The month of Ramadan. The only month used in the Quran by name is Ramadan. Right? So ayah number 185, Allah says, شَهْرُ Ramadan, The month of Ramadan. الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ What is the month of Ramadan? When we think about the month of Ramadan, we think about fasting. But what does Allah want us to think about? Allah says, when you think about Ramadan, you think about the Quran. شَهْرُ Ramadan, الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ That is the month in which Quran was revealed. هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ It is a guidance for all people. Quran is not just guidance for a one for one particular community that only the scholars need to know this book and they need to communicate. Yes, in terms of law, they should. They should they are more well versed in it. But every single person should have the guidance from the Quran, should be able to understand the Quran. And that is one of the motivation of these sessions that we know we should know what the Quran is saying. All people should know it. So that the thing that happened to the people of the past that only a few, few people had this book in their hands and they modified this book, changed the book and used to control the masses. That should not happen. Every single person should be in every single hand. So Allah says, Huda linnas is guidance for all people. huda furqan It is clear proofs and guidance and a criterion. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ Whoever witnesses this month, whoever cites a moon, whoever witnesses this month should fast the entire month. فَلْيَصُمْهُ All of it. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا If someone is sick أو على سفر or traveling فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Then he has to make up those days after. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wants ease for you. وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ Allah doesn't want any difficulty on you. وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ How is it easy? Fasting, Allah says, it's Allah wants ease for you. How is it easy? What's easy is that it's easy to have taqwa. That you are training yourself to May, you know, protect yourself from halal things, therefore it becomes easy for you to protect yourself from haram things after Ramadan. And you know, even science says, you know, we don't, we don't have to rely on science for our iman. When Allah says something, it is good for us. But people who have weak faith rely on science and all these studies and all that. So, just a side stat on this, that psychologists say that for you uh, to learn a new habit, you have to at least practice it for 22 days to 30 days. If you want to new, build a new habit or get rid of a bad habit. It's just, they, don't, they, haven't, they don't know anything about you know, fasting or anything, 30 days and all that. But they just say this is the norm. That you have to practice something for 22 to 30 days. And, you know, uh, and, and the it numbers go up and down, but 30 is what my professor said. So I was like shocked when I heard this. 
Sadaqallah. Right? Allah said the truth. And there are many wisdoms that we don't know. Allah wants ease for us because when you finish the numbers, uh, these numbers, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ And, you know, glorify and thank Allah, say takbir. That's why we say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We do the takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهُ Do the takbir of Allah. عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ For what He has guided you to. Us getting Ramadan, fasting in the month of Ramadan is only for, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's nothing on us. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us live till Ramadan and help us enjoy the blessings in Ramadan. So that you may be thankful. Ramadan is celebrating the Quran. We don't celebrate one day, we celebrate for 30 days. We celebrate the Quran because Allah sent this beautiful book for us to be guided. And you thank Allah that He protected your soul this year. That we have enough time to nourish our bodies. But how much time do we have to nourish our soul? So Allah says, He guided you so you can protect your soul in this month. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي آه number 186 when, when my servants ask you, O Messenger of Allah, about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am near. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ I answer to the call of the caller whenever he calls. Ramadan is a month of dua. After you fast in the month of Ramadan, then you are worthy of Allah's answers that you become the abd of Allah so Allah says ibadi when my servants ask you about you about me rasulullah tell them i am near i answer the call of the caller whenever he calls whatever he says i answer to him but what is the condition allah says falyastajibu li answer try and answer my call whatever i'm telling you follow that well you minu be and believe in me wala'allahum yarshudun so that you may be on the right course uhilla lakum laylat as-siyam ar-rafathu ila nisa'ikum Lawful is made for you um, in, the, in the nights of Ramadan, in the nights of fasting. In the nights of fasting, it is, it is made lawful for you that you have conjugal relationships with your wives. That they are a covering for you and you are a covering for them. That just like our clothing covers us and comforts us and protects us, a husband and wife are supposed to protect each other and comfort each other, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, like, like the clothes. عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ He, Allah knew that you used to betray yourself and, you know, and have these conjugal relationships in the nights. And, you know, the Sahabas were having this relationship and they were having this guilty conscience in, their, in, in, in themselves. Like, you know, I don't know if I'm doing this right or wrong, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to remove that guilty conscience mentality. You should not have that. You can have conjugal relationships without any problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it halal to them. فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah forgave you and عَفَى عَنْكُمْ He, you know, He lovingly pardoned you. فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُهُنْ Now you can go into them. وَبَتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ And seek what Allah has ordained for you. The primary foundational purpose of marriage and having relationship is to seek what Allah has given for children. Right? وَبَتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ and eat and drink eat and drink until you see the white thread right until you see the dawn basically right the 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 distinction the white thread the fajr until the uh, daybreak right min al-khayt al-aswad min al-fajr thumma atimu siyama ila al-layl then complete your fasting until nightfall wa la tubashiruhunna and do not have any relationships with your wives wa antum aakifuna fil masajid when you are in i'tikaf when you're doing i'tikaf is for those days you cannot have any relationship tilka hududullah that are those are the boundaries said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fala taqrabuha do not go close to it do not don't even cross, Allah is not saying don't cross it, don't go close to it. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies the ayahs to the people so that they may guard themselves, protect themselves. Allah is clearly saying what the, what the boundaries are. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ Do not eat the wealth, ayah number 188. Do not eat the wealth. Uh, you know, uh, unjustly, with you know, with through haram means, and do not give any briberies to the rulers, right? Do not give any money and, uh, and, and bribe them. Uh, by doing that, a group is eating the wealth of others, eating the wealth of 
other other people bil sinfully wa antum ta'lamun so here the command is to deal with people in the in the best of manners do not cheat in your businesses yasalunaka 'anil ahilla they ask you about the moon big question right world war 3 when is the moon when do we fast yasalunaka this is not about that moon okay yasalunaka uh, 'anil ahilla they ask you about the new moon qul hiya mawaqitu lin nasi wal hajj they ask you about the moon tell them that the moon is for for timings mawaqitu lin nas for, for for people to for calendar well hajj and for hajj to know when the hajj is and you know when to begin all that it is not righteous that you come from behind from the back door of your house um, enter from the front doors so what is it saying this was there was a um practice of the Arabs back then that when they would make the intention for Hajj and they would leave their houses and uh, for some reason they couldn't perform the Hajj they had to return to their house to get something they forgot something something they would not go from the front door they would go from the back door jump from the window or from the fence or something and then get that and leave because they thought it's if they come back without performing Hajj, they thought it's not right. Allah did not accept their Hajj or Allah doesn't want them. So Allah is saying, you know, remove all those superstitions. The message here is don't have any superstitious belief. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And, uh, you know, have the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may be successful. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا And fight in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the way of Allah, الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Those who fight you, وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا And do not transgress. In Allah لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Indeed, Allah does not like those who transgress. So here, the law is given for fighting. There are three conditions. If a person, if a community is fighting, if, you know, going for jihad, there are three conditions in this ayah. Number one, you're, you're fighting only for fi sabilillah, that to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you only fight if the other party is fighting you. If the other party is fighting, you don't initiate anything. It's always self-defense. If they are not letting you practice and they are fighting you, you have the right to fight. And for the sake of Allah, not for land, not for anything else. And number three, If you do go into fight, do not transgress, do not cross your boundaries. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Allah does not like those people who transgress. وَقُتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ In an often misquoted ayah, right? وَقُتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ Kill them wherever you find them. This ayah is talking about in the battlefield. When you are on the battlefield, obviously, you are supposed to kill wherever you find. It's a war. وَقُتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ And kill them wherever you find them. وَأَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَخْرَجُوكُمْ Drive them out of their house from the place where they, driven, uh, they have driven you out from. وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ Persecution and torture and trial is worse than killing. That them causing fasad is worse than a person being killed. وَلَا تُقَاتِلُوهُمْ And do not kill them عند المسجد الحرام When you have entered the sacred mosque. When anybody enters the sacred mosque, the Kaaba, they are safe. حَتَّى يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي Until they fight you. If they fight in it, فَإِنْ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فَقُتُلُوهُمْ If they fight you in Masjid al-Haram, then you can fight them. كَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ That is a retribution for the disbelievers. فَإِنْ انْتَهَوْ But if they give up, if they stop, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Then indeed Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. If they stop, you should stop. So only fighting if they fight you for self-defense. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ And fight them until there is no fitna left, there is no persecution, and the entire deen, and everybody worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. فَإِنِ انْتَهَوْا But if they give up, فَلَا عُدْوَانٍ There is no hostility إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ Except upon the transgressors. You know, under Islamic law, it is okay for anybody to practice any religion they want, right? And we know that in the past, during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, during the time of Abu Bakr, you know, we had, you know, non-Muslims living under Islamic law. In fact, in Jerusalem, you know, people were only safe under Islamic law. When Muslims were ruling Jerusalem, you will see the, anybody, the Jews could practice, Christians could practice, they had synagogues, churches, anything was fine under Islamic law. But when you have other nations taking over, you see massacre, you know, people being killed and all, you know, blood, all kinds of bloodshed happening. So Allah is saying it is okay for them and only when a nation transgresses and fights you, you will fight them back. أَشَّرُ الْحَرَامِ بِالشَّرِ الْحَرَامِ The sacred months are for sacred months. وَالْحُرُمَاتِ قِصَاصِ 
Qisas is also forbidden in these months. So the, in the, the Arabs had four sacred months. The four sacred months were Muharram, Dhul Qaida, Dhul Hijjah, and then Rajab. Right? So Muharram, Rajab, Dhul Qaida, Dhul Hijjah. These four sacred months, they were not allowed to fight in it because these are the month of Hajj and Umrah and they wanted all the paths to be safe so that people can easily come and it's for business, right? So if there's war, no one will come. So they want to like, stop fighting and then when, when these four months are gone, they will continue fighting. So they're fighting and then Rajab 1 begins. Guys, Rajab 1, let's fight after, okay? That's the thing, kind of thing they had. Let's fight after a month. So they would. So Allah says, sacred months, all for sacred months. فَمَنِ اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ And whoever makes an attack on you, فَاعْتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِمِثْلِ مَا اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ Then you attack them like the way they attacked you. وَاتَّقُوا الله And be afraid of Allah. Be conscious of Allah. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ And know that Allah is with those who have taqwa. وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And spend in the path of Allah. وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ And do not throw yourself in distraction. Do not take yourself into distraction. وَأَحْسِنُوا And be generous and be kind. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Verily Allah loves those who are generous. وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ And perform the Hajj and Umrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the laws for Hajj and Umrah. Perform Hajj and Umrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنْ أُحْصِرْتُمْ فَمَسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْهَدِي If you are barred from going to Hajj and Umrah, if you are prevented from going to Hajj and Umrah, then what should you do? فَمَسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْهَدِي Whatever animal you are taking with you, sacrifice that. So today we don't take our animals with us, uh, especially if you're going from Canada because I guess goats are not allowed in the flight. Now, and back then, they would take their goats and you know camels and all that I mean, with them as they're going. So Allah says, if you can go, then slaughter the sacrifice and come back, like the Muslims did in Hudaybiyah. وَلَا تَحْلِقُوا رُؤُوسَكُمْ حَتَّى يَبْلُغُ الْهَدْيُ مَحِلَّةً So people who have been to Hajj, you know the steps. So you cannot slaughter the animal. So you cannot shave your head until the animal is slaughtered. So do not shave your head. وَلَا تَحْلِقُوا رُؤُوسَكُمْ حَتَّى يَبْلُغُ الْهَدْيُ مَحِلَّةً Until the animal has reached its place of sacrifice. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا Whoever is sick among, amongst you, أَوْ بِهِ أَذَمْ مِنْ رَأْسِهِ Or if there's some disease on, uh, in, his, in his head, فَأَفِدْيَةٌ مِنْ صِيَامٍ أَوْ صَدَقَةٍ أَوْ نُسُكٍ And if for some reason you cannot shave your head, then you can give a fidya, redemption, مِنْ صِيَام uh, fasting for three days, or you give a sadaqa or nusuk, or you make another sacrifice for not doing that. But if you are saved, and if you are saved, then you can go ahead and perform your umrah and hajj. And here, tamatta' is used because that's hajj tamatta' that's used here. So there are three kinds of hajj. Okay, side point on, on hajj. So tamatta', qiran, and ifrads. So tamattu' is when you have Umrah and Hajj together with one Ihram and then you have Qiran, you do Umrah and Hajj without any break and then you have Ifrad which is just doing Hajj. So he says, Allah says, فَمَنْ يَعْتَدَى فَمَنْ فَمَنْ تَمَتَّعَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ إِلَى الْحَجِّ Whoever combines the Umrah and Hajj and does Hajj tamattu' فَمَسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْهَدِي Then make, uh, then sacrifice the animal, whatever is easy for you. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدِ And if you don't find a sacrificial animal, what should you do? فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامِ Then fast for three days to make up for the, 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 the animal that you didn't slaughter. في الحج, fast for three days in Hajj. وسبعة إذا رجعتم. And fast for seven days when you come back home. تلك عشرة كاملة. So you fast in ten days in total. Right? For not sacrificing the animal. ذلك لمن لم يكن أهله حاضر المسجد الحرام. And this law of fasting uh, for ten days is only for the person who does not live in Masjid al-Haram. It's for the non-residents of Mecca. Masjid al-Haram. وَاتَّقُوا الله And beware of Allah. وَاعْلَمُوا And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is شديد العقاب is severe in retribution. الحج أشر معلومات Hajj is in the known months. When is Hajj performed? Hajj is performed in Dhul Hijjah from 8 to 13. Al Hajju Ashroom Ma'lumat is in the known months. Faman Farid Faman Farada min Faman Farada fi hin al Hajja Fala Rafatha Wala Fusuka Wala Jidala fil Hajj. And whoever makes the intention, if you make the intention to go for Hajj, then you cannot do three things. Farafat is to have uh, conjugal relationships, wala fusuk or indulge in sin, wala jidal, and you cannot quarrel. 
engage in sin and you cannot quarrel, you cannot argue during Hajj. Whatever good you do, Allah knows it. And take good provisions for Hajj. When you go, Allah is saying, take tazawadu, prepare well for Hajj. And what is the best provision you can take? The best thing you can take is taqwa. You see how all the topics are revolving around taqwa? Because the book, the surah began talking about taqwa, that guidance for people of muttaqin. What will take you to taqwa? You know the five pillars, each one of them is leading you to taqwa. Each one of them. Siyam we talked about, salah we talked about, you know we have hajj being talked about. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about spending next, right? Taqwa. What taqoon ya ulil albab? Be afraid of me, O people of understanding. Lisa alaykum janahun and tabadahu fatlam mi rabbikum. Just when I finish the hajj, then we'll take a short break, inshallah. Lisa alaykum janahun, ayah number 198. Lisa alaykum janahun and tabadahu fatlam mi rabbikum. It is not, there is no sin upon you if you seek the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means that you are going for hajj and Umrah for the sake of Allah. But if you want to have like a small business set up or going to meet somebody else, there is no sin upon you if you do that. فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتِ When you come out of Arafah, what should you do? فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Mash'ar al-Haram, which is at Muzdalifa. And the Arabs, when they would go for Hajj before Islam, they would go to Arafah and they would skip Muzdalifa. They should go to Mina directly. So here Allah says, no, you have to stop in Muzdalifa and you should remember Allah at Mash'ar al-Haram, which is Muzdalifa. Alhamdulillah, in my uh, Umrah trip recently, I got a chance to visit Mash'ar al-Haram, take some pictures. And uh, now I have, you know, understanding of where this is. So that's what Allah says, Mash'ar al-Haram in the ayah. This is the ayah written on top of that masjid. فَوَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ And remember him just as he guided you. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ Before this, you were completely lost. ثُمَّ أَفِيضُ مِنْ حَيْثُ وَفَاضَ النَّاسِ ثُمَّ أَفِيضُ مِنْ حَيْثُ وَفَاضَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ Then come out from where uh, the people come out, وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا and seek Allah's forgiveness. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Verily, Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ When you finish the rituals of Hajj, the manasik of Hajj, what should you do? فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا So remember, your, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like you used to remember your forefathers. So what used to happen is the Arabs before Islam, the pre-Islamic Arabs, after they finished the Hajj, what they would do, they would sit and they would talk and, and you know, praise their grandfather. You know, my grandfather was such and such. They would praise their grandfather. He did, he went to this battle and you know, he killed these many people and you know, he was such a good, you know, hunter. All the, they would just, you know, praise and, you know, uh, you know boast about their, their um, you know, uh, forefathers. Allah says, you should also do, but instead of praising your forefathers, you should praise Allah more than what you used to praise your, how you used to praise your forefathers. فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا And among the people are those who say, O oh, our Master, آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Give us in this world وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ There are some people when they make dua, they say, Ya Allah, I want this. And I noticed this when we went for Umrah, that people are just asking for dunya. Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, give me that. Ya Allah, give me this. They're only asking for dunya. And what do we see? Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ And the people who ask for dunya, they have nothing in the hereafter. But among the people are those who say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, give us good in this dunya and in the hereafter. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And protect us from the punishment of fire. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبُ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا Those are the people who will have a share from what they have earned. وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ And Allah is quick in taking punishment. And when the Sahabi was asked, he says, Rasulullah SAW says, O oh, you know, oh my companion, ask me whatever you want. And what does he say? Of all the things he says, Ya, ya Rasulullah, I want to be in your company on the Day of Judgment. That's it. He did not, you know, Rasulullah SAW is asking to him, Ask anything, I'll give it to you. Allah will give it to you. And here he has a golden opportunity to make his wish. And what is he making? Saying, Ya Allah, give me, Ya Rasulullah, make dua that I should be with you. And he says, you know, anything else? That's it, Ya Rasulullah, nothing else. So then the Prophet says, you need to help me by doing 
more sujood, increase in your sujood, and that will take you close to me in the hereafter. So inshallah, I'll take a quick break over here. Uh, number 202, we're finished. And after the break, we'll continue. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, there is food outside for purchase, uh, so you can uh, help yourself. Go outside, eat something, and uh, we'll be back after the break and continuing the class. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Then working on like you know teach, teach. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like working, yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> so more around you know getting things running. Mm. A lot of the new time. programs, the school, everything. It's the funding. It's a lot. Mm. It's going well. Okay. I'll talk ready. to you after. Okay. Shall yeah. I don't see I don't see anybody who uh, is this. I'll be coming here pretty often, yeah. so you'll be okay, seeing. Okay, inshallah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> 
So I'll start in a minute. So I'll start in a minute. Heather? Why does it go away? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر الله في أيام معدودات فمن تعجل في يومين فلا إثم عليه ومن تأخر فلا إثم عليه لمن اتقى واتقوا الله واعلموا أنكم إليه تحشرون آية نمبر 203 And this was the last آية of that I should have covered in the previous session. So Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the days that are numbered. And these are talking about ayyamu tashriq. Ayyamu tashriq are 11th, 12th, and 13th of Dhul Hijjah. So Allah says, remember Allah a lot. So by the 10th you're done Hajj. Right, you're done everything. So Allah says, in the, the, the three days that you have, remember Allah a lot. فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ But whoever finishes, finishes off in two days, 11th and 12th, فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ There is no sin. So the person, you know, stays till 12th of Dhul Hijjah and comes back on the 13th, that's completely fine. وَلِمَنْ اِتَّقَى For the one who fears Allah. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ And beware of Allah. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ And know that you will be, uh, you know, herded towards Him. Then we begin the next passage. ومن الناس من يعجبك قوله في الحياة الدنيا ويشهد الله على ما في قلبه وهو لد الخصام. Now Allah subhanahu compares two groups. The first group Allah says among the people is the one who is very impressive when he talks. You know, في الحياة الدنيا in his worldly life and the way he speaks, he looks you know fantastic. ويشهد الله على ما في قلبه وهو لد الخصام. And he takes an oath by Allah and he makes you. You know, he shows that he's, he's the best, he's, he says, you know, Wallahi and all that, and says, I am the righteous person, I'll do it. You know, he promises, does all that. الخصام, but he is the fairest in disputing. And the context here is of Al-Akhnas bin uh, Shariq. And he was someone who was very good in his speech, but, and he used to swear a lot, uh, like take oath on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to his dealings, they were not Islamic. But when he would turn away and, and move around in the land, he would cause corruption. And he would destroy the crop, cro uh, crops and cattle. Allah does not love those who cause corruption. When it is said to them, Fear Allah, brother, what is this? You should not do this. His arrogance kicks in and out of his out of his sins. Jahannam. Jahannam is sufficient for him. What a horrible place of resting it is. So this person who outwardly looks Islamic and does all things and he swears by Allah, but his actions do not represent that. And when you tell him, when you tell this person, you have made a mistake, you know, this is not right. He turns, uh, you know, he becomes angry, but he doesn't. He doesn't like. He doesn't like advice. He doesn't like suggestions. On the flip side, Allah says, "Women and nas, and among the people, man yashri nafsahu bittiqa is the one who gives up his soul seeking the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The reference here is to Suhaib bin Sinan, that he was. Um, uh, uh, he, gave, he gave up everything just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is kind uh, to his servants Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu O you who have believed Udukhulu fi silmi kafa Enter into Islam in totality Wala tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan Do not follow the footsteps of shaytan Innahu lakum aduwum mubin Verily he is a clear enemy to you So what happened is Suhaib bin Sin'an He was prevented from migrating to Medina so he could not go and, and the Quraysh leader said uh, that unless you give up your home, your wealth, your everything, 
you cannot leave this place. He was very rich. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he do? So hey, he gives up everything. Take my home, take everything, let me go. So he gave everything up for maradatillah, that he gave, uh, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the kind of person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, that if you are in this deen, this deen requires sacrifice. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And do not follow the shaitan and enter into Islam completely. Do not pick and choose. Find zalatum min ba'di ma ja'atkum al bayinat. And if you slip after the truth has come to you, fa'lamu, know that under Allah Azizun Hakim, Allah is Almighty and all wise. Ayah number 210. Are they waiting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should come behind the shades of the clouds and the angels should come to settle the matter? Or they really want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He should come out and expose Himself and the messengers? If that uh, and the and the angels, if that is the case, then matter will be settled. That can only happen when the day of judgment begins and and you know punishment is uh, implemented. الأمور, and to Allah, uh, all matters will be returned. Sal Bani Israel, ask Bani Israel, come at min ayatim bayina. Ask Bani Israel how many ayat we have given them. When it says ask Bani Israel, Allah is also telling us think about the ayat we have given them. ومن آيات بينات وما يبدل نعمة الله من بعد ما جاءته فإن الله شديد العقاب that whoever changes the ayat after it has come to them then they are indeed Allah is severe in punishment that you are asking Allah you are asking that you want to see Allah but and show the ayat look at Bani Israel how many ayat were given to them shown to them they changed everything the ridicule and hence the punishment was mandated on them. زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا the, for, uh, for this worldly life has been beautified for the disbelievers. And they make fun. The disbelievers make fun of the believers and mock at them. The, the disbelievers are like, what's wrong with you? Why would you spend that money? Why would you give up everything to go and see Rasulullah You are the foolish person. For a disbeliever, he only thinks from the dunya perspective. You know, if you get one dollar less, He's like, yeah, you're a, you're a loser, right? Then what you you should you could have gotten, right? Why would you do that? But for a believer, his focus is the hereafter. So Allah Subhanahu wa says, yes, in dunya they may not have the big big uh, the biggest of houses. They may not have an expensive car because they want to go through the halal means. They want to remain halal, but and they were they are making fun. These disbelievers are making fun of it. What's wrong with you? But Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ But the person who safeguards, protects himself, and you know, follows Islam, فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Will be above these people on the Day of Judgment. وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ And Allah says, whatever you have, disbelievers, is also from Allah, because Allah gives whomever He wants without any hisab. And if Allah wants, Allah can give the believer whatever He wants. But Allah doesn't care about this He's focused on the hereafter. Humankind was one nation, was one community. Until the prophets came. Giving good news and warning them of evil. And he sent down the true book, the book, the book with the truth. So that the, the prophets can judge the people through that book regarding the things that they used to defer him. So messengers came to settle the matters and tell them the right from wrong. But what happened? They, the people started arguing more and disagreed more after the prophets came, after the truth has come to them. Why? Out of hostility, out of envy, out of the urge to dominate. That you know, I know the truth, yes we both follow but I'm not going to follow because I want to be dominant. And that's one of the reasons why the Jews did not accept, the Bani Israel did not accept the Prophet Sallallahu because they are leaders of their community. If they accept the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what's going to happen is they have to become the followers. They know the truth but they want to be baghyan. They have baghi in them that they want to dominate, they want to be above them, so they didn't want to accept. So even today we have, you know, different Islamic organizations, different messages. Yes, they can unite and, you know, form, you know, follow one path. But no, they have this thing, you know, of, of dominating and taking over and fighting for position, for, for that leadership. 
That's what happens. Same thing happens. Same story is repeated again and again, even within Muslim Ummah. But the people who believed, Allah guided them from what they used to uh, defer in. Bin al bi to the truth by his leave. Wallahu yahdi man yasha'u ila siratim mustaqim. Allah guides whomever he wills to the straight path. Am hasibitum. Now Allah subhanahu wa questions all of us. Do you really think that the anta dukhulul jannah? Do you think they will enter jannah like that? Allah is addressing the mentality of the people who think, I'm a Muslim, I go to jannah. Doesn't matter what I do. Right? Do you really think we'll go to jannah? Walamma yatikum mathalu ladhira khalo min qablikum. And when. The, the things that came to the people before you has, has not happened to you. The test that the people went through before you did not come to you. So Allah is telling the Sahaba, the Prophet Sallallahu that you, do you think you will go to Jannah until, until, without going through the difficulties that people before you went through? Yes, you will go through the trials Bani Israel went through. And for us today, Allah is telling, you will go through the difficulties the Sahabas went through and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi went through. Yes. That will happen. Don't think uh, you, just because you're a Muslim, you get to go to Jannah for free. You have to prove it by all these, by passing all these tests. So Allah says, "Masathum al wa darra." These people were tested, were afflicted with poverty and distress. Wazulzilu. The earth was rocked. The earth was shaken to them. Rasul, hatta yaqula Rasul amanu. They were so much, you know, they were shaken to the point the the the, the uh, trial was so difficult to the point that even the messenger and the believers started saying, Mata Nasrullah, when is the help of Allah coming? Think about that, right? Going through Badr, Uhud, Ahzab, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. Zulzilu. Mata Nasrullah, when is the Allah coming? Allah, inna Nasrullah qareeb. No doubt, Allah is to get you, you know, listen up. Inna Nasrullah qareeb. Verily, the help of Allah is very, very close. Yasalunaka mada yunfiqoon. They ask you, what should we spend? Qul ma anfaqatum min khair. It's not about what you spend, who should you spend on. Qul ma anfaqatum min khair. Whatever you spend of the wealth. Walidain, to your parents, spend on your relatives. Walidain comes first because it's natural for you to spend on your family, your, your wife and children. But spending on family, your, your parents is difficult. So Allah says, Walidain, to your parents, and your relatives, and orphans, and your and the poor people, and the travelers. You know, a lot of kids say, Oh no, Mama, that's my money. Oh no, Dad, that's my money. I earned it. And you know, the Prophet heard this conversation once and he says, You and your wealth both belongs to your father. All of it, you everything belongs to your father and your parents. Right? That you know, they should be it's not even a question to ask, should I give my parents? You know, how dare you? Whatever good you do, find Allah bihi alim. Indeed, Allah is fully aware of it. Kutiba alaykum. You see, yes, alunaka comes quite often, right? They ask you. This is Sahabas asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is the deen, Ya Rasulullah? Tell us. Tell us more. How should we implement? This is a different kind of questioning. This questioning is different than the Bani Israel questioning of like, are you making fun of us? What does that mean? They're not making that those kind of questions. Fighting has been prescribed on you even though you don't like it. It is possible that you detest, you don't like something, but it's actually good for you. It's possible that you love something, but it's actually bad for you. This ayah can be taken generally. That you know, you go through things in your life and you question, you don't like it, but Allah is saying, who knows actually better for you? And something you love to do, but who knows, it's actually bad for you. But you wanted to become something, but you became something else. Allah is saying, maybe that's good for you, right? No one likes to, you know, take an injection, right? It's, it's kurhu lakum, like we don't want to, but it's good for you, Allah says, right? Doctor says, it's good for you. Same thing, we go through things in our life, it's bad for you, you think it's bad for you, Allah says, actually, who knows, it's actually good for you. That's why we have to be always content. Wallahu ya'lam, wa antum la ta'lam. Allah knows, and you do not know. Yasalunaka an shahr al-haram. They ask you about the sacred months, qital in fi, fighting in it. So these are the disbelievers questioning the Prophet Are we allowed to fight in the sacred month? So what happened is, 
there a group of people of Muslims they were you know fighting and they actually fought in the first day of Rajab thinking that is the last day of Jamaatul uh, Jamaat Thani right so they actually fought in that in that in that day and so these people took this excuse and went to the prophet ﷺ. you know what muslims did they fought in rajab how dare they do that and then the prophet ﷺ and and the uh, the response comes here they ask you about fighting in the sacred month Qul qitalun fihi kabir. yes fighting in the sacred month is not good they should not do it's a grave thing but Allah is responding to them. Allah Akbar. Look at that. Yeah, you bring in this excuse about Muslims making mistakes. But you know what's even worse than killing someone in the in the in the, in the sacred month? Stopping someone from the way of Allah. Stopping them from going to Masjid al Haram and causing corruption and getting them out of their house. That is worse. You know that? Man, like the way Allah responds to them. You know, you better, you know, look at yourself before pointing fingers at, the, at, at others. That's what Allah is saying, right? And I know a lot of kids, you know, in the school, they come up like, you know, Brother Junaid, this person did this and this to me. And then I question, why did he do it? You know, what you did that, 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 that's worst. You shouldn't have done that. Yes, this is bad, but what you did is worse than that. So that's why Allah, that's how Allah responds to them. Well, fitnatu akbaru min al-qatl, persecution and, you know, and, and trial and fitna is worse than killing someone. وَلَا يَزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يَرُدُّكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ إِنِ اسْتَطَاعُوا That uh, and you, or you continue to fight, you do not stop to fight. حَتَّى يَرُدُّكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ إِنِ اسْتَطَاعُوا That Allah is saying that they will not stop fighting you until they revert you to their religion. That they want to make you leave your, your path. وَمَنْ يَرْتَدِدْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِ And whoever goes back on their deen, فَيَمُتْ And he dies. وَهُوَ كَافِرْ And he is a disbeliever. فَأُولَاكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And a person, a believer, he dies as a disbeliever. Allah says, all his qiyam and siyam, everything he has done is wasted in this dunya and in the hereafter. Those are the people of hellfire. They're going to remain in it. Verily those people who believe. And those people who migrate. And fight in the path of Allah. Those are the ones who can hope for Allah's mercy. That these Muslims, yes, they fought in this month. They should not supposed to this one day by mistake. But you know, Allah says, but they believed, they migrated for Allah's sake, and they are fighting for Allah's sake. Those are the people whom Allah is going to show mercy uh, on the day, uh, you know, in this dunya and the hereafter. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. Yasalunaka anil khamri wal maysir. They ask you, Ya Rasulullah, about wine and gambling. What is the ruling regarding this? Qul fihima ithmun kabir. Tell them that wine, intoxication, khamr is not just wine, anything that intoxicates. Intox intoxicants and gambling is a grave sin. And it has some benefits to the people. But then, But the sin is, but the, the evil effects are more than its benefits. And they ask you about what they should spend. Tell them the surplus, whatever is extra you should spend. That is how Allah clarifies the ayat so that you reflect. You know, look at how Allah answers. You know, a parent says, a kid comes and asks the parent, you know, is it okay to drink wine? Like, astaghfirullah, how dare you ask a question? Make some wudu. Get lost, what's wrong with you? You should go to some imam. You know, why would you do that? This is the kind of response the parents give. Look at the response Allah gives. You know, wine has some benefits, you know. There's some benefits, but you know, the, the, the evil effect is more than the good. So, you know, that's where you should stay. Allah gives the logic. Allah says, Allah gives it to you. And let them pick, let them understand, make them understand. Don't just shut them off, right? Give them. And a person comes, a kid comes, and, and now the things... Uh, you know the uh, be, you know what's happening in today's time. They will ask crazy questions that you didn't even imagine. But don't shut them off and, and reply to them in a manner that they can think. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah says Allah clarifies the ayah so you think, make them thinkers. Tell them why it is bad. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ 
So that in this dunya and in the hereafter. They ask you, Ya Rasulullah, about the orphans. What, is, what should we do with the orphans? Taking care of them, improving them is the best thing. But if you, if you are taking care of the orphans and if you live together, you, live, you have a joint family with the orphans, that you share the wealth, then ikhwanukum, you're all brothers, it's okay. Allah knows the one who caused corruption, the one who's a, you know, Musid from, from, from the one who clear, you know, keeps things right. So a person can say, I'm taking care of the orphans, but he can kind of steal their money, you know, and, you know, misuse their money. So Allah is saying, yes, you can have a joint living, have the same bank account, merge your money together and live together, but Allah knows when you are causing corruption. If Allah wanted, He would have. Uh, you know, he would have put you in trouble. Inna Allah Aziz and Hakim. Verily, Allah is Aziz and Hakim, Almighty and All Wise. Wala tantihul mushrikat. Do not marry the mushrik, the mushrik women, the 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 women that worship uh, that you know. That is a mushrik, right? Uh, associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hatta yu'min until she is a believer. So laws on marriage and divorce. Wala tankihul mushrikati hatta yu'min. Do not marry the polytheist women until, until they believe. Wala amatum mu'minatun khayrun bin mushrikatin wala a'ajabatkum. Verily, a slave maid, a slave woman is more, is better, and a believing slave maid is better than a mushrika who is rich even though you like the mushrika even though you like that non-muslim girl more than a muslim girl it is better for you to marry that muslim woman even though she doesn't have that much wealth same thing for the women they should not marry a polytheist man until he believes or they believe Verily, a believing male slave is better than a polytheist man. Even though you like him more than the other person. Why? Why should you not marry the, uh, the non-Muslim mushrika woman? Because she or, uh, he or she is calling you to fire. Because you will follow her religion or his, his religion. Allah calls you towards Jannah and His forgiveness. If you do not follow her, her uh, his, his or her religion, and even, um, it's possible that your children may follow you know, the religion the, uh, of the mushrikan. Your nasa will come to an end. Your lineage will come to an end. That's why you should not. Allah clarifies the ayat to the people so that they remember. And they ask to Ya Rasulullah about the, uh, about the menstruating women. It is tell them that menstruation is a, is, is difficulty, it's trouble, it's, it hurts. So stay away from women during her menses. Do not approach her, do not go close to her until she is purified. When it says go, don't go close to her, obviously it is the, uh, the don't have conjugal relationships. But everything else is fine because we cannot be like Jews who completely forsake the women during the, these times. So we are a ummatan wasatan. The Prophet did everything with Aisha radiallahu anha. The only thing is, you cannot have conjugal relationships. When they are purified from that, from that uh, period, then come towards them from where Allah has commanded you. This is saying that you, should, you can have conjugal relationships only uh, from the place that will lead to children. Right? Not from any other passage. In Allah you hibbut tawabin. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are oft, you know, those who do tawbah, wa you hibbul mutahirin, and those people who purify themselves. Tawab has to do with ritual purity, that you know, purifying yourself from the sins, and mutahirin is someone who purifies outwardly from through water. Nisa'ukum harthul lakum. Your women are a cultivating ground for you. Your women are cultivating ground for you. Husband and wife are like a farmer and the fields. Just like a farmer goes to the field for what? He does not go to just enjoy the field. He goes for some produce to bring something. So the primary foundational purpose, maqsad of marriage is for children. And all the enjoyment, all that is a secondary derivational maqsad. 
So Allah says, go towards women with the purpose, with the intention of growing your lineage and continuing lineage after. Go approach that cultivating field, approach a woman however you wish. That any, you know, in any position you want, obviously it cannot be from the back, only from the front. And send, you know, advance yourself, extend your race. And beware of Allah. Know that you're going to meet Him. And give good news to the believers. And do not use Allah as a shield for four things. That you use Allah, like Wallahi, you use these words to do the wrong things. You use Wallahi and say the wrong things. Do not do that. And tabarru wa tattaqu wa tuslihu bayna nas. Being, don't use Allah as a shield against being beautiful and being righteous and making peace between people. Wallahu samiun alim. Allah is all hearing and all knowing. Wa la yuakhidukum Allahu billaghu fi aymanikum. But if you have this habit of just saying Wallahi, 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 just you don't actually mean it. You just say it like some of our brothers in Islam, mashallah. La yuakhidukum Allah billaghu fi aymanikum. Allah will not blame you for the things that just comes out of your mouth but Allah will hold you accountable for what your hearts have earned meaning what you do with intention Allah is most forgiving and most forbearing for those people who do Allah with their wives Allah was a kind of was a practice which is that you know you say that I'm not gonna be with you you abstain from your wife uh, you know, and you say you don't, we won't have any relationships. So, those who do Allah with their wives, they should wait for four months. So, they should wait for four months. The waiting period of, of someone who does that is four months. If if, if if the person calls the wife back before that, then indeed Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. And if it goes beyond four months, then there is talaq. talaq. But a person who makes the intention for talaq, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is all hearing and all knowing. وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ And the divorced women, now marriage is done, now we talk about divorce. The, the divorced women shall wait for three menstrual cycles. Right? When a, when, a, when a husband says your talaq, the person, the woman has to wait for thalaqsat al for three menstrual cycles. And if the woman does not have periods, then for three months, if she has reached menopause. And it is not lawful for them. If the woman is pregnant, so I say the husband says your talaq, you know, I'll give you talaq, but the woman is pregnant, then she doesn't wait for three months, she waits for the entire time until she gives birth. So Allah is saying, do not hide. If you know you're pregnant, reveal that. Do not hide that. If you believe in Allah and the last day, just to get rid of this relationship, you may hide it until three months and then get rid of, rid of your husband. And then, you know, continue. that can happen. If you are pregnant, then the husband has to take care of you and you have to stay until the baby is delivered. The husband is more entitled that he gets the wife back after the period is over, right? After the three months are over, he should, he has the right to get it, get the wife back and do Islah reconciliation. And the wives have the same thing, that they also have the right to finish this by doing khula, right? The men have a degree above the women because they have, only they have the right to reconcile after they call divorce. Right? If the husband says divorce, he, he has the right to bring her back, not the woman. Wallahu Aziz and Hakim, Allah is Almighty and all wise. Talaq is only for twice. Talaq can only be, only be done twice. Talaq, this is talking about talaq raj'i. Only two times you can do talaq and get the woman back. So first time the husband says talaq, the wife has to wait for a period of three months, uh, three, uh, three periods. Within that, husband calls her back, then she's fine. But the first two talaq, she has to be with the husband in the same house, right? So first time the husband says talaq, the, the wife stays with, with the husband, right? And they just don't have any relationship or anything. Uh, she, she stays and the husband is, says sorry and all that reconciliation happens, it's good. And then the husband says again in his life, your talaq, then that's the second talaq, second strike. And then the third time he says, that is 
talaq ba'ina, right? Ba'ina, and the after that, there is no return, right? So the, the talaq raj'i is only twice. al talaqu marratan. Fa'imsaakum bi ma'roof, keep her with ma'roof, with goodness, aw tasrihum bi ihsan, or leave her with ihsan. Keep, don't keep her in the middle. Either you keep her, you no, know, give be good with her. If you don't want her, leave her with ihsan, and that's it. Wala yahillu lakum an ta'khudu mimma atitumuhunna, mimma atitumuhunna shayyan illa yakhafa illa yuqima hudud Allah. And it is not lawful for you an ta'khudu that you take out of what you have given them. That if the husband says talaq to the wife, he cannot get back the, the mahar he gave. The bridal gift he gave to the, to the wife, he cannot get it back. That's hers. Except if they fear that they will not be able to observe the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the both of them fear that they will not you know, uh, you know, they cannot maintain the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا فِي مَفْتَدَدْبِ There is no sin if she redeems herself. That she calls khula. That, you know, if the, if the wife cannot practice her deen and, you know, she is, you know, she is forced into things that is not halal, then she can... Uh, you know, back off and do khula and, and get out of it. Tilka hududullah. Those are the limits said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fala ta'ataduha. Do not cross it. Wa man yata'adda hududullah. And whoever crosses the limits said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa ulaika humu zalimun. Those are the wrongdoers. Fa yum talaqaha. But if he divorces her, fala yahillu, fala yahillu lahu min ba'du hatta tankiha zawjan ghayra. And if he divorces her, it is not lawful. So this is the final talaq. Let's say this, she's completely done the three talaqs are done and she's done um, if she if he divorces her then the remarriage cannot happen until until the wife marries another husband for, uh, and the, she have conjugal relationships and there's some talaq that happens and then she can come back to the first husband so if the wife is completely done and she wants to come back to the first husband then she has to marry another husband without with with the intention of not divorcing, right? You have to genuinely marry, marry someone and that husband dies or something happens to him, gives talaq or something, then she has the right to come back and marry the, the first husband. فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا جُنَّهَا عَلَيْهِمَا أَنْ يَتَرَاجَعَا إِنْ ظَنَّا يُقِيمَا حُدُودَ اللَّهِ What is the condition again? That the, both of them can maintain the law said by Allah. The word that is used again and again here is حُدُودُ اللَّهِ if you, husband and wife, together cannot maintain the law set by Allah, if one of them is transgressing, only then you should separate. And if you're going to rejoin, the only condition is you will maintain the law set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hududullah. Again, Allah says, وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ Those are the laws said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ يُبَيِّنُهَا لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ And He clarifies to you so that you understand. وَإِذَا قَلَّقُتُمُ النِّسَاءِ فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ فَأَمْسِكُهُنَ بِمَعْرُوفِ أَسْرِحُهُنَ بِمَعْرُوفِ When you give talaq to your wives and they mature their term, meaning they reach the end of that term, either you... Take her back or let her go. Do not keep her in the middle and harm her and cross the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever does that, he's wronging himself. Don't make fun of Allah's ayat. Don't make fun of so people, you know, the husband especially, they will make fun of uh, fun of these ayat and say like talaq, 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 three times you're done, you know, get lost. They make fun of Allah and then they say talaq and they, you know, again, you know, even in joke, you cannot use the word talaq. Even in joke, it happens for real. And remember the, Allah's favor upon you. And what He has sent down upon you from the wisdom and, uh, uh, and, and He admonishes you. Beware of Allah. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully knowledgeable. 232. And when you divorce your women, and they, they mature their terms, they reach the end of their terms. Uh, if they are done, if they are completely, uh, you know, if they have reached the end of their term and they want to marry somebody else, do not stop them. Uh, if they agree to be together with fairness. That 
uh, actually this is talking about coming back. So if the wife reaches a term and she wants to go back to the husband, husband is ready to meet, the family should not stop them from meeting again. Right? Bil ma'roof, they should go back and they will live in fairness. That is the advice for the ones who believe in Allah in the last day. That is beneficial, that is better for you and more pure. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. And Allah is knowing and you do not know. And the mothers who suckle their babies, right? They should suckle the baby for two years. Hawlaini kamilain for two complete years. For the one who intends to complete. Doesn't have to be complete. For the one who intends to complete. Let's say the husband and wife are separated, but the mother is pregnant. The husband has to wait and feed and take care of the of the of the mother and the baby. And when the baby is born, the husband, it is upon the husband to Rizquhun to give the rizq provision, kiswatuhun for clothing, uh, wa bil ma'ruf with justice, with equality. That you should take care of your wife and your child. La tukallaku nafsun illa wusa'aha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden uh, uh, anything on anybody more than what it can bear. La tudara walidatun bi waladiha wa la mawludun lahu bi waladi. Now, husband and wife are separated. Now, the child is, you know, either living with the mother or the, or the father. The mother should not use the child to harm the father. The mother should not say, you know, your father was so bad, he did this, 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 this. And then, or if the child is with the father, the, the, the father says, you know, your mother is an evil woman. She did this and this and this. You should not harm each other through your child. And even the family should do the same thing. Sometimes the parents are separated and the, but the, and the ch children live with the mother. And what happens is the mother's family kind of says, you know, your father, whole family is messed up. You should not go to, go to him. Or on the flip side, the, you know, uh, father's family says, don't go to them, never see them. No, it, he's a son. The son or daughter belongs to both mother and father. They should be able to meet freely. Do not, do not stop them. فَإِنْ أَرَادَ فِصَالًا عَنْ تَرَادٍ مِّنْهُمَا but if you want to wean your child off, if you want to stop, you know, giving, you know, uh, breastfeeding the child, وَتَشَاوَرِن through consultation, if you want to stop before that, فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا there is no sin upon upon them. وَإِنْ أَرَدْتُمْ أَنْ تَسْتَرْضِعُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ and if you desire to have a foster uh, a, a mother to suckle the child, أَوْلَادَكُمْ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ there is no problem if the mother doesn't want to suckle the child, the father can get another woman to breastfeed the child. فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا سَلَّمْتُمْ مَا آتِينَ بِالْ uh, there's no sin upon you as long as you pay the woman her, uh, her uh, you know, uh, um, due uh, salary. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ And beware of Allah. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-seeing. وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفُونَ مِنْكُمْ And those people, and, and those people who die, Leaving behind their wives. So what if the husband dies? How long should the woman wait? If the husband divorces, then the, the wife waits for three cycles. If the husband dies, how long does the wife wait for? For four months and ten days. And when those four months and ten days are completed, There is no sin upon her to do what she wants. In, in, in a manner that is known. And Allah is fully aware. So this is a widow that for four months and ten days, she should not beautify herself, she should stay inside. But after four months and ten days, she is treated like a normal woman. She should not be treated like, oh, she's somehow cursed, she's like widow. She should, then the society should not look down upon her. There is no sin upon you. So what if a man wants to marry a widow woman? Okay, he, he is interested in her. What should, what should he do? He should, if he wants, he can give an indication to the woman that I want to marry you after the four months and ten days. Before that, there is no marriage, nothing. After four months and ten days, before that, he can give an indication or keep it hidden yourself and wait till the four months and ten days are done. عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ سَدَذْكُرُونَ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ سَدَذْكُرُونَ هُنَّ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُوَاعِدُوا هُنَّ سِرًّا إِلَّا أَن
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that knew that you used to talk with each other and make some you know secret promises but you should illa an taqulu qawlan ma'rufa so if you are meeting in secret it is okay but you cannot have any of the secret means not alone but you know having a conversation it is fine but don't give don't have any uh, romance, right? Qawlam ma'roof, seek upright words. Do not propose her about anything. Wala ta'zimu uqdatan nikahi hatta yablugh al-kitabu ajala. And the no resolve the contract of marriage until the the term ends, right? Do not make a commitment for marriage until the terms end. Wa'lamu anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi anfusikum. Know that Allah knows what is inside yourself. Fahdaru, beware. Wa'lamu anna Allah ghafurun halim. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving and most uh, most forbearing. La junaha alaykum in talaqatumun nisa. There is no sin upon you if you divorce your women. Ma lam tamassuhun. And if you have not touched them. So the laws of divorce are just finishing up. I want to complete, so maybe another five minutes, inshallah. Sorry for overtime. So there is no sin upon you. In nisa. If you divorce your women, malam tamasuhun. So what if the husband and wife they have nikah done, but they did not touch each other? There is no consummation of marriage. What happens? You, if you want to divorce, something comes up. You want to divorce. There is no sin upon you if you do that. If you do that. Um, so you have not touched them and you have not fixed them mahar. So if you have to, if you give divorce, there's no problem. So, but what you should do is give some gift, give some, you know, payment just to uh, make her feel, you know, good. So if there's divorce before even you fix a mahar and before touching, you can do that. But Allah says, give something according to your status. If you're from a high class, you give something high, you know, something expensive from a low class, give something that is according to your level. It is a right upon the righteous. The other scenario is, if you give them divorce, if you give divorce to the women and you have not touched them, but you already said, I'm going to give you this mahar, right? I'm going to give, I don't know, $5,000 as my mahar to you, as a gift, as a bridal gift to you. Then, and then you do talaq, what happens? Should you give the 5,000 or what? فَنِصْفُ مَا فَرَدْتُمْ Give half of what you have committed. So give, give 2,500. إِلَّا يَعْفُونَ يَعْفُوَ الَّذِي Except that if the wife says, if the generous wife says, no problem, you can keep it, I forgive you, then it is up to the husband to do what he wants. الَّذِي بِيَتِهِ عُقُدَةُ النِّكَاحِ is the husband. وَأَن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى But you forgiving is closer to taqwa. Again, the word taqwa. All of see marital, right, marital life, all marriage, divorce, everything is done for with taqwa. With keeping Allah in front of you. Right? Making sure when, when you see when marriage happens, what's one ayah that's always repeated? Ittaqu, ittaqu Allah, ittaqu Allah, fear Allah, taqwa, taqwa, taqwa. Why? If your relationship with Allah is good, then all your relationship will be set right. So Allah is saying, marriage happens with taqwa, divorce happens with taqwa, right? And this, وَأَقْرَبُ taqwa that you giving it and forgiving is closer to taqwa. وَلَا تَنْسَوا الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Do not forgive the, forget the favor Allah has given unto you. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Indeed, Allah is in full view of everything. حَافِذُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Guard your prayers. The conversation is happening about divorce and how intense things are. And right in the middle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings, guard your prayers. If you guard your prayers, if you renew your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will automatically give the rights of your husband and your wife. It, this, this is, this is going to happen. So Allah says, guard your prayers. Don't get caught up. Yes, marriage and divorce is part of life. It's not like you're done. It's not like you lost your hereafter. This is okay, this can happen. Hafidhu ala salawat. What's more important is don't forget, don't neglect your salah as you're caught up in these emotional, you know, um, uh, emotional uh, things. Hafidhu ala salawat. Guard your prayers. Wassalat al wusta. And guard the middle prayer or the excellent prayer. Wusta could be the middle or the excellent prayer. Most scholars say it's the asr prayer. It could also be the excellent prayer. See, excellent prayer means 
that the best prayer. You know, make your salah in the best way. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ And stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility and, and in uh, submission to Him. So three more ayat inshallah. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ فَرِجَالًا أَوْ رُكْبَانًا And if you fear, if you fear of being attacked, فَرِجَالًا أَوْ رُكْبَانًا Then you can walk or mount on something. فَإِذَا أَمِنْتُمْ When you are safe, فَاذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَمَا عَلَّمَكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعَلَمُوا This ayah is talking about battlefield. The Prophet ﷺ in battlefield, he, he missed his salah, especially the Asr prayer. And he says, you know, woe to these people. They made us miss the Salat al-Wusta. That's where the scholars take Salat al-Wusta as Asr prayer. So because of them, we lost the prayer. You know, so Allah is saying, if you are in a battle and you cannot fight, then, um, uh, sorry, you cannot pray, then you can pray afterwards. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like He guided you. وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ And those among you comes back to marriage again. Divorce. وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ And those people who die, who are about to die, minkum, wa azwajan, and they leave behind wives, wasiyatan li azwajihim. And what should they do? They should write a will for their wives, right? Wasiyatan li azwajihim, mata'an ila al hawl. So if a husband is dying and his wives, he has to take care of wives, a wife, he has to take care of, then what should happen? He should write a will saying that my wife will be taken care of for one whole year, that all of her expenses will be taken from my money, before even the money is taken for her inheritance. غَيْرَ إِخْرَاجْ Without removing her from my house, she's supposed to stay, she's going to stay in the house. فَإِنْ خَرَجْنَا But if she leaves after that, فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْكُمْ Sorry, if she leaves before that one year, there is no sin upon her. فِيمَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِهِنَّ مِنْ مَعْرُوفِ In what she does, uh, with or with that with, and with what she does in an upright manner. Wallahu azizun hakim. Allah is almighty and all wise. Walil mutallaqati mata'um bil ma'roof. And for the divorced woman, uh, she will have her maintenance, right? Mata'um bil ma'roof that she will have. Uh, the, uh, um, she will be taken care of uh, with equality. Haqqad al muttaqin. It is a duty upon the people of taqwa. Kadalik. Now Allah concludes the passage on marriage and, uh, and divorce. Kadalika yubayyinu Allahu lakum. That is how Allah clarifies to you. He makes things clear to you. Ayatihi is revelation. La'allakum ta'qilun. So that you understand. So Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then concludes this passage. So, you know, see the transformation. So if you just step back and see where we are, Bani Israel were talked about, leadership was taken away from them, from the progeny of Ishaq, is given to the progeny of Ismail alayhi salam. We got the new Qibla, we got the new book, Quran, and we got a new month of fasting, we got new revelation, all these laws. And all these laws are actually contrasting the laws of Bani Israel. And Allah is saying, don't do that. This is the right law. They messed up. Now this is the right law. Fix it, fix it, fix it. And you don't play around with these ayats. Right? Ayatihi la'allakum ta'aqilun. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to implement on these ayat. And He makes us the ummat and wasatan, the middle nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the beginning of this juice. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al Hakim. Wa nafa'ana wa iyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al Hakim. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, inshallah. Okay. 6.30 inshallah. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll pray Asr together in Jama'ah. Okay, so month of Ramadan is coming. So but this is we should do Jama'ah. So inshallah, we'll right after, like the break time, we'll pray Asr quickly. Um, and uh, continue with the we we'll start 5.30 sharp, so please be on time. Yeah, thank you.